Okay, so this is a CCOT review of part of chapter 22. I want to clarify that we're not covering the whole chapter here. If you look at our prompt, the key phrase is political and economic systems in the Soviet Union, and the prompt is phrased at as the extent to which they changed. And so I'm going to kind of use this as an opportunity to practice the skill and look at a portion of the chapter. And because it's saying the extent to which it changed, my two options are two changes or a continuity and a change. So let's take a look at a brainstorm and how we can start to organize this into a Okay, so I organized my brainstorm by these dates because those are the dates in the prompt. And so I'm roughly thinking of this as my beginning evidence, of this as my middle evidence, and then of this as my end evidence. So I'm just asking myself, starting with political, in 1900, what's their political system? Because that's what I, my prompt is dealing with here. So I know they have a monarchy. I know that in the middle of the time there's communism after the revolution, which started in 1917 but went longer. And I know that in 2000, communism has fallen and they have democracy. So that's kind of my starting point in terms of my thought process, but I need more specific evidence. I can't write an essay in which I just said, in the beginning they had monarchy, then they had communism, then they had democracy. So after I got those ideas down, I went back here and said, how can I prove they had monarchy? And I thought of this 1905 revolution and how it did not succeed. It did not remove the czar from power. I'll just show you down here that I knew the fur trade had happened. But that's not really a political system, so I'm not going to end up using that. So I can just cross that off. I went to communism, and I thought about in the middle of the time period. I thought Joseph Stalin, who ruled longer than, remember Lenin is the guy who brought communism to the Soviet Union? But I decided not to use him, partly because he stops around 1920 or so, and I'm looking for more in the middle. Stalin went all the way till the 50s, and also because Stalin, I think, is a better example of that. So I'm looking at the fact that this was a dictatorship. So how can I prove that? Because he purged his political enemies, because he killed people who opposed him. So I've got, if I think about it, kind of two dictatorships happening here. Because the czar also is basically a dictator. People don't have any rights or power. You know, they crush this revolution. And then Stalin, even though he claimed to be working for the people, killed his enemies. So now I come to the fall of communism, and I know that Gorbachev was a leader who kind of believed in this idea of glasnost, of opening up new ideas, and what that resulted in by the year 2000 is elected representatives and the removal of the Communist Party. So if I look at that, I've got dictatorship, dictatorship, representatives, so I think that my change down here can be the fall of dictatorships, and I can split my evidence into these three parts. So now let's look at what I did for the economic theme. Okay, for economic, again, I'm looking at the system here, so I want to know what their economic system was. I know there was a, mainly agricultural work in 1900, but I know that they are in the process of industrializing. They had poor working conditions and that this was a state-directed program, that it was not something that people were doing on their own. Under communism, it was also state-directed, and my evidence of that can be the five-year plans that Stalin was trying to catch up with the West, and he told basically, this is how much steel you're going to produce, this is how much food you're going to produce, and because communism fell by the year 2000, they have more capitalist principles, what we call a market-based economy, where people decide to make steel because there's a demand for steel and they think they can make money doing it. So I think down here, I'm going to talk about the rise and fall of the communist economy. So I'll say with my beginning, middle, and end, first they had this kind of state-directed industrial economy, then they had communism, and then communism is going to collapse by the year 2000. So now we're going to look more specifically what that could look like in body paragraphs. So what I've done here is taken my idea of the fall of dictatorships and just organized it differently in a outline form. So here's my evidence we talked about. My proof of monarchy is a failure of the 1905 revolution. My proof of communist dictatorship is the purges. And my proof of democracy is that they elected representatives. So now I've got some small why questions I have to answer. And again, I'm focusing just on the evidence. So I'm basically saying, if I'm saying the revolution failed in my evidence, my small why is, why did the revolution fail? And I can say, for instance, uh, power of the Soviet military. That this was kind of a people's rebellion, and it was crushed by the Russians because they didn't have the same military options that the government did. 
when I talk about why did Stalin eliminate his political enemies, I could say to hold on to his power. You know, I think Stalin was not a person who was serving the people. I think he was in it for his own power. And then when I talk about why did they choose representatives, this was a new idea of Gorbachev's, okay? So because Gorbachev believed in Glasnost, which was, you know, to be open to new ideas, uh, those new ideas went in the direction of democracy because that's what people thought would be a good solution to the challenges they'd faced under communism. So when I look at my big why, I know that the dictatorships were eliminated. It's kind of what my point is. So I'm going to say that this is sort of an anti-communism answer. That for most of the century, you know, maybe 1917 to about 1990 or so, Russia is living under communist rule. You know, we call that the Soviet Union. So when Gorbachev, and I don't want to overlap with this, but when Gorbachev says, let's talk about new ideas, those new ideas are anti-communist. And I can talk about the West influencing Russia and convincing people that communism is a bad idea and that democracy will solve their problems. So I think these are some ideas I would put in my big why. Now let's look at how we'd organize a paragraph for the economic change that we identified earlier. So in my economic change, remember I had the rise and fall of communist economies. We'll come back to this big why later. My evidence was the state-directed industrialization under the czar. And I'm going to want to kind of remind myself that this is in 1900. And my evidence for the Stalin plan was the five-year plans. And then I had, and this is um, maybe in the 1930s. And then capitalist space economy after the fall of communism. You know, let's just go ahead and say the year 2000. So for my small eyes, why did the state direct industrialization? Um, I think that this has to do with the czar wanting his power. You know, I'm going to control the economy to, to maintain my hold over the, the country. And I think that's also true for Stalin. Different guys, different systems really, but same idea of this requirement that they're going to um, command things. Now I want to remember when I'm doing this to focus on economics and talk about why Stalin would want to control the economy because in my previous paragraph I talked about how he was power hungry in terms of political stuff. So I just want to make sure I can focus on the economy there and that'll work out okay. And then as far as why Russia chose capitalism after the fall of communism, the fact that the country was so poor and that uh, foreign investment would come with a capitalist idea. You know, if you've got a profit under capitalism that these foreign investors are going to want to bring money into the country so they can build factories, railroads, other kinds of things that will help the economy grow. So why did communism fail as an economic system? It's because people were poor and they wanted a system that was going to be more efficient. You know, a productive opportunity for profit as the motivator for people. So in the case of the Soviet Union, communism can be used as an example of a system that does not work because people are not rewarded for profit. So I think that would work for my economic change and hopefully that helps you practice this CCOT skill and also take a look at reviewing the Soviet Union's political and economic systems over the 20th century.